Welcome. You are listening live to the Tour on the Sister Speak show. I am your host, Ayana, and it is my pleasure, my brothers and sisters, to converse with you all this evening. I'm so excited. Oh, yes. Oh, the show does keep going no matter what. Okay, brothers and sisters, so welcome to my first time listeners. Welcome back to all of my regular faithful listeners hello to all of my international listeners how is everybody doing you all feeling all right pressing through making it happen anyway no matter what hand you were dealt with you still making leaps and you are still expanding well that's what I call pressing through and so I just want to say to you all I'm so glad that you all are able to join with us live we are recording live from Dallas Texas I'm so excited that's my favorite thing to say because I am and you should be I'm full of joy how about you Mm. so listen to all of my first-time listeners let me just greet you accordingly and, and, and make you feel welcome with the sister speak show we are a syndicated podcast on Amazon Alexa and on the sister speak show you can catch six segments and within those six segments special guest interviews live performances in studio interviews and live on location reports the special guest who will be on the sister speak show are dynamic and impacting the communities with their passions the sister speak show is a talk show that will keep your mind and your soul informed, energized, and encouraged. We are a cultural renaissance platform that influences a climate that is conducive to who you are and who you should be. No reckless entertainment. Mm, mm, mm. Just responsible listening nourishment. We don't go dumb. We go wisdom on the Sister Speak show. With that being said, the Sister Speaks show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. A talk show for great minds that will keep, for great minds that create, inspire, impact, and evolve. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through the arts. Sister, Spiritual inspiration shared through Ayana. My brothers and sisters, tonight on the Sister Speak Show, on the tour on the Sister Speak Show, we have a very special guest. Dallas, once again, I put on for my city. Stand all the way up. I mean, that's only proper, right? My special guest this evening is super producer Ben Wade. Ben Wade, along with Allie, the intro for the Sister Speak show. The first intro for the Sister Speak show was produced by Derek Ben Israel, my husband. That beat that you're listening to right now was produced by Derek Ben Israel. My special guest this evening, Ben Wade from Dallas, Texas, is going to definitely be an epic interview. If you have any questions, you can chat live with us. If you are aspiring to become a music producer, or if you are an independent artist or an artist that is signed to a major label, if you are in the music industry in any aspect, then we've got you covered. Because on the Sister Speak Show, we cover every aspect of the music industry, and we'd love to interview you. You can reach us at SGT Queen on Instagram. You can also reach me at Webstars. Excuse me. At sistergoodthing.com. Webstarts is the platform that I use to create my website. Shout out. So listen, brothers and sisters, before I get into the show, I have one commercial break for you. And after that, it will be, if you don't know, now you know, tips on the music industry. I'll see you on the other side of these recordings. Don't make me come looking for you because I've been waiting to talk to you ever since the last time we spoke and now that I've got your attention I don't want you to go anywhere you stay tuned I'll be right back listening to the Sister Speak 
make shows even easier now with the new abilities available from Spreaker Skill on Amazon Alexa. With Spreaker on Alexa, you can now listen to the Sister Speak show from even more places from all around the world. You also have navigation control. Fast forward and rewind podcast to make sure you never miss a second of your favorite show. And then you can ask for show recommendations like the Sister Speak show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. A talk show for great minds that create, inspire, and evolve. If you don't know, now you know. Tips in the music industry. In a recent article I read written by Yanni Leviathan from Waves Audio entitled Making Music, The Six Stages of Music Production, I thought it would be appropriate for the tour because so many aspiring and already musicians are looking for the best way to put their foot forward and music producers and sound engineers and those who are just really involved in creating music. You always wanna know what it is that you can do to make your talent better. So let's read this article together, shall we? Or let's listen to this article, shall we? In today's music making world, the only rule is there are no rules. Record whatever you want and use it as a sample. Automate effects in ways never imagined before. Mix rhythms and genres to create beats and melodies that go further and create new categories of music all their own. However, just because you can do anything in music doesn't mean you should. No matter what type of music you make, you want it to be good music. You want other people to enjoy listening to your tracks, to hear the message clearly, and to not be distracted by a bad recording or weak playing. Like a chef with a kitchen full of ingredients, there are a myriad ways to put your masterpiece together, and it's very easy to muck up. The goal of this column is to help you understand the process of making music from beginning to end, so you can create tracks that meet a standard of quality by which we call good music, regardless of style. With each article, I'll try to give you new ways of thinking about your approach to making music, which you can apply however you want. What's important is that you understand the process and tools at your disposal so it will be easier to construct a quality track that delivers your message as intended. Let's start by defining the process of music production by separating it into six into six basic stages. One, songwriting. Two, arranging. Three, tracking. Four, editing. Five, mixing. Six, mastering. These by these are by no means set in stone and are based entirely on how I personally like to think about the process. The breakdown is meant to be used as a general guideline to help organize the process in our minds. Many times, we do a few of these at once, i.e. songwriting and arranging, tracking and editing, and mixing. But on average, these are the general steps taken to produce a track, consciously or not, And it's helpful to understand what goes into each stage so we can execute it properly and get the best results. Let's start with songwriting. What does it mean to write a song when so much of today's music is wordless? This is a great question for another article. But for our purposes, let's say that songwriting is the process of putting musical ideas together to form a larger structure of coherent melody, harmony, and rhythm. It's the process of brainstorming that results in a beginning, middle, and end. What makes a good song? This is also highly debatable, but a question I'm more willing to take on. A good song in terms of content will depend on the listener and what they're drawn to. It's totally subjective. However, a good song in terms of craft can be identified more objectively and will usually have all the elements listed above. 
melody, harmony, rhythm, beginning, middle, and end, and will be put together in a way that's pleasantly recognizable, <coughs> excuse me, while still being creative and true to the message of the music. When it comes to lyrics, I like to think of prodigy, how the lyrics and music work together to support each other. It's not enough to have good lyrics from a literary perspective. They're also, they also need to sound musical when the singer sings them. A good song will develop as it goes along, taking us on a familiar path littered with surprises along the way to make sure we're listening. The melody, what the singer sings, will fit the harmony with the guitars, bass, and synths mostly play in a way that, that is pleasing to the ear, using repetition to help the listener get used to the chords progression while transitioning to the next section and a different set of chords progressions. A good song will also have a good sense of rhythm and can make your foot tap with the groove whether or not there's a drummer playing. For many people, the songwriting process is tied into the tracking process as they start with a drum loop and build from there, recording new ideas on top of each other until they end up with a, fin a finished song. Even though this may be a different method than the singer-songwriter who sits with their guitar and notebook to sketch out a tune, the result should still be evaluated according to the same guidelines. Are the melody and harmony catchy enough to stay in your head after the song is done? Does the track keep your attention with the new ideas as it develops? Does it groove? Taking away all other aspects of the production, if you had to play the song bare with only one instrument and a vocal or just an instrument, is it a good song? If not, the rest won't matter very much, but get this one right from the start and the rest will roll out with ease. Next week, stay tuned for Arranging. You've been listening to If You Don't Know, Now You Know. Now back to the tour. Huh. Brothers and sisters, welcome back. You are listening live to the tour on the Sister Speak show. I am your host, Ayana, and that was, if you don't know, now you know, tips in the music industry. Next time we are on the tour, you will hear arranging. I want you to create the best song possible. I want you to have the best music production possible. And I want you to be equipped with the wisdom that is needed for you to excel. I don't like music that sucks. If it's garbage, it belongs in the landfill. And it's not to hurt anybody's feelings, but we have to keep things 100. So when it comes to wisdom, soak up as much as you can. Be a sponge. Be observant. Be willing to admit that you don't know. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Because when you expand your mind, you enter into this realm that allows you to be unstoppable. People won't try to just pull anything over on you because you know what you're talking about. You'll walk into a studio and you'll be able to, you know, um, take it as it is. You'll be able to, you know, say, hey, I need to let you all know that I am aware of who I am as an artist, as a musician. I know what I want. I know what sound I want. Now, listen. Some of you are, have talents inside of you that enable you to produce your own music as well as write your own music. You are a maestro. You have a gift that allows you to just really excel. And in that gift, you are really saving yourself a lot of money. Do you have an iPhone? Well, one thing I need to tell you about is GarageBand. GarageBand is your best friend 
if you will. It allows you to create your own. It allows you to explore several instruments. I mean, to look at GarageBand being used in my home is amazing. It is complex to my eye, but literally it it just... It really is making a lot of people rich. And when you're rich in it, it's like, hey, you know, this is going to actually work. And it's going to have people, you know, wanting to buy my album. Brothers and sisters, hold on. Calling in live to the Sisters Speak show. My special guest, producer of the Sister Speak Show intro, super producer. Let's give it up for Ben Wade. <laughs> how you, how you doing? It's very good to meet you as well, my brother. I thank you for being a special guest on the Sister Speak Show on the tour, and I just want to personally thank you for producing the Sister Speak Show intro along with my sister Queen Allie. Oh, you know, no problem at all. She let me know you needed something like this, so anything for Allie, so you know, she's not no problem at all. Oh well, thank you so much, and it really just took the show to a new level. It's always in my head. I'm always thinking about it, and it just gives me a fresh vibe. I, I believe that when you put those chords together, you achieved what it was that you were trying to achieve for that sound. So thank you so much just for allowing that to be also be a part of the Sister Speak show. Thank you. So let's just get into it briefly. You know, I won't take too much of your time, but I just want to have enough time of your time to find out who you are and why you're so talented and just, you know, how you got started. So let's just get into it. When did you discover that music was your passion? Okay, and so when you were, you know, you're a young man and you're listening to music, what are some of the musical influences that you were surrounded by often? Now, see, when you say Gangstar and Guru, I know who you're talking about because okay. that's my time frame, okay? Yeah. Yes. I uh, remember them, and I do. I, I There was a couple songs that I liked. Don't ask me to say which one they were because I, <laughs> cause, cause I didn't say I loved. I said I liked. No, but no, seriously, I know that era, and I know that, that sound that was vibing. So do you think that, do you feel like you relate more to the late 80s you know, complete '90s vibe. Is that is that something that you kind of really your ears kind of akin to listening to? Oh yeah, well, most definitely. That, that era right there, I feel like. I mean, uh, the, the most influential of the era was when it comes to hip hop, in, in my opinion. So yes. yeah, that was the time that that's the time I came of age. I mean, so mm-hmm. most definitely the, the '90s. I mean, I mean, 100 percent influenced by that. For sure, and I think a lot of people who you know, got to experience the 90s culture, the late 80s culture. You know, if you look online and you just even have just local conversation, uh, a lot of the conversation is bring the 90s back. Where's the 90s? And and I feel like a lot of times you don't know what you have until it's gone. And then you don't know what you have until you press play. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like when you listen today to some of the music, you know, it kind of really makes you appreciate the artists, the, the, the music producers, and just that, that time frame of the music industry because it's like, okay, the listening ear actually cared about the vibe and, and, and 
I believe that that the people, the powers that be during that time frame, actually cared that okay, these people want to drive with their top down. Let's give them something to ride to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, oh, yeah, yeah. It was such a new. It was still new at, at the time, so everybody was still being creative, trying something, mm-hmm. just trying something new. I mean, trying everything under, under the sun to try to see if you could know, make something right. So it was just such a, a great time. Right, and so now, like when you listen to. When you listen to the music now, it's just like when you when you hear fresh music that, you know, makes you be like, OK, this is good. This sounds good. You almost want to grab and hug the song because oh, yeah. it's been so long since you heard something that was so groovy, if you will. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. and it's so funny because today I was accidentally accidentally and i mean accidentally listening to <laughs> fifi okay with uh 69 and nikki and i say accidentally because that is not something that i would ever on purpose listen to it's one of those things like when you walk into a store and it's like you have no control over the store dj it is what it is when you walk in there right okay so i'm listening to the end part of fifi by 69 and nikki and he said Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I said, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I am done with everything in life. Everybody shut down the mics. Next time you see him, shut down the studios. Pull, you know, like like how the Asians sometimes they like to, you know, well, in, excuse me, not Asians, but any store owners likes to have that metal garage door that they close down so you can just not get into the store. That's what we need to do next time we see him trying to enter into the studio. We need to immediately hit the button. That allows that gate to come down. We cannot have this anymore. The lyrics have to be on. Tr- the lyrics have to be on trial, Ben. They really do. They need to be on trial. <laughs> I mean, hey. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a different. I think it, I mean, it's a different sort of sort of music. You know, I mean, it's 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 just rap, I guess. But I mean, I don't, you know, really. Consider it, you know, hip hop. I would say hip hop is something totally, you know, totally different. And that's, that's what, what I'm into. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if that's what you like, I mean, no, I'm not, I'm not going to knock whatever you like. Right. <laughs> you know, we'll see. Look, cool. Well, I'm just telling you, I'm going to knock it because that's what I have to do on the Sister Speak show. I have to knock and I have to see if anybody's home. Because if the house is vacant, then it needs to be occupied, okay? With somebody who wants to be a resident. And we need to occupy that space with somebody who wants to perform who wants to actually provide lyrics that are going to make people say, okay, all right. But I do also understand the objective of why 6 9 exists, why he says what he says, why he does what he does, and he does attract a certain group. And, you know, you see him on the charts and you see all this stuff. But for me, I would, he, he reminds me of those, he's the type that is like, Grab your kids. Get your kids. You know, like, grab your kids. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what is this? It's like, you know what I mean? Like, okay, I could deal with homie the clown, but who is this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I, I can't say that I understand it, so, you know, I just let it, let it be what it is. Right. Right, but you know, when it comes to, you know, and that's pretty a good segue for what I'm getting to. You being a music producer, you know, this is your stamp on a song, right? These are your your melodies, your chords. This is something that you have taken the time out to produce for an artist. You know, are, have you ever been listened to uh, the lyrics of a potential, you know, song being, uh, you know, acquainted with your beat and be like, mm-mm, this, <laughs> I can't do this one. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is hilarious to me. You'd be like, oh well, um, but you know, <laughs> you know, and I just said that because it's just like, you know, um, it, it, what are the manner? Are there any type? Is there any type of 
music producer etiquette that you have to have when dealing with an artist, you know, because you don't want to hurt anybody. Well, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings ever, but you definitely want to steer them in the right direction if they're lost. Yes. And we, we talk about how to how to move forward and get to a place where we we both like it. But I'm I'm definitely an advocate for just putting it up on the table right there and hey, this 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 not the way we're gonna do it. Let's talk about how we how we can. You know? Yes. And we, we go forward and let it like that. And uh, I mean, if you're a real artist, I mean, you would appreciate somebody coming at you like that and instead of you know letting it get to a certain point and you know it's already out in the street. Yes, definitely. Because, you know, I think nowadays, because gone are the days of the album cover, it's not like you can track down the producer and be like, why did you allow him to come into the booth? (laughs) You know what I mean? It's not like you can just look through the whole. It's just like, okay, you know, you really have to rely on somebody actually saying these are the music credits. This is who did it or whatever, because, I, you know, because if in fact, Some of the artists who have been let loose in the music industry, if I ever, ever, ever get an opportunity to read any album covers and I find out who has been producing this garbage, oh, I'm sending a letter. I'm going to start a petition. We're going to have a civil action lawsuit against this. No. (laughs) And you know what? And all jokes aside and inside, I just, you know, I really want to hear and see, you know, our brothers and sisters be able to produce music that will not come back to haunt them later on and has longevity that can enter into what I like to call uh, the classic hall of fame, where this is a classic, like you mentioned, you listen to Teddy, the Isley brothers and, and, and things and, and, you know, music artists of that generation. And it's just like, you know that they have cla- they're in the classic hall of fame you know between the sheets footsteps in the dark you know things of that nature you know turn them off and all of all, you know all the things that love tko and all of those type of songs are classics so you know you just want to hear musicians create classic hall of fame songs you know do you agree with that Yeah, like those rap snap chicks, like chips I tried the other day. I, that's just a side note. I said, I, oh boy, because I, I love barbecue potato chips. I just did, I don't, I now know that I don't like barbecue and honey. So I tried the Romeo Miller chips, okay? I'm like, you can't go wrong with barbecue. I'm counting on you, Rome. I've seen you on Growing Up Hip Hop. You've got this in the bag. So I'm like, let me eat, let me try it. Uh, First of all, I needed insulin shot probably after I ate one chip. I was like, whoa! <laughs> I blasted off to the moon and back. I was like, why is this so sweet? I'm talking about, like, if you read the back of it, I think the ingredients said sugar, most sugar, brown sugar. Okay, uh, I think it said uh, extra sweetness. It, it says, it, I think it was mixed with warning. Uh, it was a lot in that chip. Have you ever tried? What, have you tried those chips yet? I haven't even heard of anything like that. Have you ever? You've never tried any of those potato chips? The Romeo Miller's chips? Yeah, the the wrap snacks. Have you tried any? No, 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 no. I I hadn't even heard of it. <laughs> oh well. They're at, they're, they are in certain stores, I believe, uh, obviously, based on what you just said. So they are lot, definitely in the urban communities. And, you know, you can eat little Yachty. Mm. 
and then you can eat just all these chips and I'm just like I'm over it already no diss to to the chip industry I love potato chips trust that but those right there were not the ones for me Somebody right now is probably saying, those go crazy. You tripping. Look, I know something like, you know, you know, you know, some people love to be like, you tripping. You know, them go crazy. But anyway, um, so when it comes to, you know, walking into the studio and having a Ben Wade experience, take us to that. What is it like spending a day in the studio with you? That is amazing. Brothers and sisters, you are listening live to the tour on the Sister Speak show. My special guest, super producer Ben Wade, is uh, in the building via phone. And if you have any questions, you can chat live with us and just, you know, keep it righteous, keep it cool and keep it professional. And uh, we'll definitely get those questions over to him. So I like the fact that you're willing to take the time to get to know the artist so you can actually produce something that really speaks to who they are versus just... You know, I've got six beats, choose from them. You know, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because I believe there's nothing wrong with having a portfolio of beats ready to go. But then you're taking that extra step. So that means that's like caring about the artist. And I think that's, you know, very, that should be popular because then um, it just really lets the artist feel safe, you know, with their talents with you. So after you've gone home and you've produced the beat, uh, do you have to, you know, do you find yourself maybe contacting that artist and saying, you know, asking a few more questions or after you spent that day, you've got it and you're ready to go? Oh, no, we're, we're still vibing. I come home and we'll, that's, I mean, that's initial. You know, I, I right. come home, I, I have maybe three, three to four ideas to, to send. I'll send them over to you the next morning or next day or whatever. You know, hey, what do you think? You know, hey, I, I like this one. I don't like this one. So, I mean, the ones that you like, okay, let's go from here. Yes. You know, and I'll, I'll, I'll base the next batch of tracks that I make for you yes. around the ones that you that you said that you liked. Mm. So that, that way that it'll, uh, the, the project will have, you know, some sort of cohesion as well. Because that's a lot of the times, I mean, I'm saying that because, I mean, a lot of the projects that I do, I, I normally start to finish it, you know. I don't know. Right, right. Yes. Yeah, I understand. So now, what it, when it comes to payment, because payment is key. You know how uh, how is it uh, is it uncomfortable asking for payment, or is this something that you discuss up front with the artist? Yes. Run me my money. Money has never been my my my, my motivator. You know, my motivator is the, the art of it. But, yes. Uh, so uh, you can ask like Allie. I've never asked Allie for a dime. Uh, wow. I never will. You know, wow. That, that, that's just right there. The way wow. You, that, that voice is beautiful. You it know? is. Uh, oh my gosh. With what I'm doing, so no, she you know she'll never have to pay me a dime. Wow. And, Wow, that is amazing. And you know, I believe one thing, okay, yes, I I am a podcast host, but I'm also a gardener. Okay? So you too are obviously are a gardener. I believe in sowing seeds. I believe in this is my labor that I love. This is my talent that I was given and I have to do it 
for the love of it, regardless. And I know that, you know, sowing seeds is, is how, you know, you reap and you, and, and in reaping, in that reaping, you experience things that you never would imagine receiving and you never know how, what you do for the love of what you do is going to come back and bless you. It's going to come back and bless you because that's just how it goes. But it's just amazing how when you do those type of things, like what you just said about my sister, Allie, it just goes to show that somewhere along the line, you know, you will never be forgotten and that you will always be first on the list to, you know, enjoy what I'm enjoying because I've gotten to this level. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't understand that concept of, it's like a spiritual barter. And when you barter spiritually, you know, you enter into a realm that really where the giving just keeps on giving, excuse me. But in order to barter spiritually, you have to have patience. And if you don't have patience, then you're expecting it right away. I did this for you. So what you going to do for me? And that's a nasty way to live because it means that you didn't do it with a pure heart. You did it with, you know, mischievous intentions, if you will. So brothers and sisters, what he just said, I just want you to really grasp and hear. There's a difference between producing just because you want to be hot. And producing because you know you need to be heard. And so I appreciate that spirit that you have and you keep having that because that's how you, because Allie's voice is, <clears throat> it is, you know? Woo. I mean, yeah, yeah, she, that that voice is. I mean, a pa- she is. It's it. It is thunderous. It is, it, and she's beautiful. She's sweet. She's kind. I had her as a special guest on the Sister Speak Show. We vibed out. I mean, it was a wonderful, wonderful conversation. I don't even want to say interview. It was a wonderful conversation. I mean, I just really vibed out with her. Anything she ever needs, just like you said, you know, it's all good. You know. Um, I, I always want to look into the people who I've interviewed because they're all phenomenal and, 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 and get back and, you know, and, and outsource with them, you know, go back and insource really with them and okay, Ben does this. Well, let me holler at him about this, you know, let's see how, cause, you know, cause it, it, it vibes and it's going to look good on both of our portfolios. And this is an international podcast. So everybody's listening. So it's just really a, every, all oh, we all win, you know? Thank you. Thank you so much. You as well, so you yes. It. Thank. Oh, thank you so much, and the same for you. No, your your sister speak show family, and you know anything you ever need. You know it's all good. You need a free voiceover. You know, uh, about, you know, you know, the fact that you are a music producer, I got you, you know, um, the sister who did the logo for my show, you know, I did a voiceover for her. She didn't pay me. She didn't ask. That's just what you do, you know, because she did that for me. Now, even though, of course I paid for those logos, but this is a sister who owns her own graphic design business. You know what I'm saying? Why not? You know, give her give her that extra traffic because who doesn't need a logo, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You gotta, we gotta lift each other up. Got to, got to, and and I know that God is not a midget, mm, mm, mm. and neither is Jesus the Christ. So you know, with that being said, I, I just got a lot to give, and and that's just what's up. So you know, getting back to your your music production. How long did it take for you to learn how to mix and master and work the board or do you work straight through garage band or or or, or is it a mixture of both? Uh, it took a, mostly a little maybe a, a year or, or two. I mean, I started from 
<laughs> wow. And you know what? That's amazing because I was just speaking before you said, uh, before you had called in and it's just like, you have to be willing to learn, you know, and there's oh, nothing, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with not knowing. That's amazing. And I just want to say this, being laid off, which I was laid off as well in 2009 in California when I was teaching along with 26,000 other teachers. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let me tell you, I know why they wrote the song Glory Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you for my pink slip. Uh, Let me spray some perfume on it and wave it in the air and say, thank you, Lord. And this is why I loved teaching. I love my students. They were the only reason why I was there. The only reason why I was there. But there comes a time and a place where you are a well in a fishbowl. And you want more for your life. But you have a dedication to this current obligation you're in. But you want more. You know that you have super on the inside of you. And sometimes <clears throat> we will allow our emotional connections to a person, place, or thing to hold us when we need to leave. So the Lord God Almighty, thank you for orchestrating the term laid off, the practice of laying off and pink slipping, not because of the economic downfall that a lot of us incur when that happens, but because it then propels us into a super determination to eat, live, and breathe by any means through our talents. And it then allows us to explore that thing that we were doing on the side, that hobby that now, because we live in an industry and in a time frame of independent creative artists, and, and, and that now I'm pursuing it. But if you had never been laid off, Ben, you would have never been in this realm completely. It, it takes that. And, and then it takes that drive and that determination, you know, to accompany that talent. Because you got to live. You got to eat. You know, you got to get to and fro. The basics. You need them. We all do. To, su- to survive. And yes, the Lord will supply all our needs and he will supply all our needs sometimes by pink slipping us. And that's heavy. That's heavy. And so with that, now here you are doing what you do and doing it well. And I'm quite sure there's no looking back for you. Am I correct? Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> yes. That is the funniest. I am trying not to laugh because I'm trying to I'm trying not to laugh like a hyena. I'm really working on my laugh because I know my laugh needs some fine tuning. I don't I don't oh my goodness. Hello today, somebody. I feel you on that one. But you know <laughs> That is the funniest thing to me. (laughs) I'm serious. See, there it is. I'm trying to control that. See how it escaped. I'm trying to see. I only got one out. I'm really working on my laugh. But (laughs) no, 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 Ben. (laughs) Working on that. Uh, You need to auto tune my laugh for me, actually. Okay. So, anyway, you know, but for me, when I got pink slipped, you know, uh, they, it was, it was around March. Right. And so it's so cold because it's just like, you could at least done it in June when school is out. 
Now I've got to practice this walk back <laughs> and this face. You know what I'm saying? But but the but the joy of it was really like she was like, okay, Ayana, you know, um, it's uh, <clears throat> there was a vote, da 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 da, and so we're letting you go. I said thank you and God bless you, and they both looked at me like what? I was in my head like, and this is before won't he do it became popular. I was like, won't he do it? Okay, I was like, you know, run me my unemployment check. Thank you. Um, I'm out of here because, you know, number one, I was teaching English and I put that in heavy quotations. (laughs) 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 Oh, my goodness. Because, okay, I had learned the system. You're going to pass these children anyway. Because they mean money. It, see, if you want to know how a student who receives straight Fs, all, all, all quarters, can go from the eighth grade to the ninth grade, it's because that student's body is dollars. So they're going to pass them on anyway. I know a student for sure I gave an F2 and the rest of the teachers did. He had straight Fs and he went on to the ninth grade. He's, he, he, he's a commodity. So anyways, you know, um, I just got to a point where it was just like, when it comes to the school district, I really just wanted to, uh, how can I say it? I just wanted to teach them social skills. You know, I wanted them to teach them something that they could survive on. So, I mean, it doesn't mean that I didn't teach them any English. Don't get me wrong, but... 95% of the time, I'm like, look, there is something out there waiting for you all. And by the looks on your faces, you've seen some of it already. And so I need, (laughs) no, seriously, these children have been exposed to some stuff, you know, some serious adult behaviors, if you will. And it's just like, you know, I just wanted to teach them social skills. So that's what I did, you know, so that's it. Once they let me go after me serving my time on the battlefield, Okay, I was gone and I sat in my house and I was like, what am I going to do? And so fast forward, here I am and I moved. Sometimes you got to go to grow. Somebody better understand about a geolocation today. (laughs) It'll save your life. You know? Yes, you do. So now you're producing. You said you chuck. You, you you gave the peace sign to the call center. There's no looking back. You're moving forward. And to date, what are your some of your most memorable songs that you have produced? Yes, 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 for sure. Yes. So it's the, a lot of that I'm, I'm, I'm proud of. That, you know, he's extra, I mean, just super, super talented guy. I did a lot of his projects in the, in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So that, there's a lot of that stuff I'm, I'm proud of. He got a, an album that we did. It's called Blue Heart. Yes. It came out of around that time, 2012, maybe. But it's, it's, it's probably almost some of the best stuff I've ever done still to this day. Wow. That sounds amazing. Um, I'm very proud of that. Yes. Well, I was hoping maybe you and you could produce an album for all of the teachers who survived teaching um, school and call it Purple Heart. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For the ones who have been called a bitch five million times in their teaching career, I just you know a purple heart for the ones who've been told you ain't my mama a million times or you ain't my daddy a million times. Is there any way that we could just get a mixtape out called purple heart and we could like, you know, we could really just have all the teachers come on and just have 16 bars, you know, and just really just let it out because they let it out when they get in a car. Trust me. Talking to yourself does not mean you crazy. It means that this is free therapy. That I, you know, I'm serious about that. Think about that. Purple Heart coming to a school district near you. Okay? <laughs> starring, it's starring. It's funny you say that. It's like I already had something else like planned. I mean, it's just, uh, it's sort of around your show and what you do. Oh. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, with yeah, it. Okay, already. Okay. Don't play with me because, see, I'm feeling like we could get some teachers from Compton. Or for all y'all out there who like YG, Bompton, um, we could get some. Look, don't play with me. I can't remember all the bees. I cannot. <laughs> okay. If it's cool, it's bull. I-, I ain't here for it. But look, anyway, so we could get some teachers from Compton, definitely in a city, New York, definitely Oak Cliff, South Dallas. Um, we. <laughs> Ooh, yes, for sure. We could get some teachers from Richmond, California. Shout out. I got y'all covered. I don't know what y'all been going through. Ben Wade got the answer. It's called Purple Heart. Okay. Spoken word. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. And then, and then, you know, um, We'll just put it, it'll be provided at every, you know, school orientation for all the teachers who are there for those 180 days, 180 days on the battlefield with everybody else's children. <laughs> That's the name of the record right there, 180 days. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Coming to a school supply center near you. Okay, but anyway, so, you know, one thing that I wanted to ask you is who are some music producers that you feel have changed the game in the music industry, past and present? So then, you know, when you have DJ Premier, you have Dre, you have Timberland, and you have Pharrell, and all who I am familiar with, you know, a lot of people don't understand that nothing is really overnight, and that as a music producer, it does take time, and you do have to learn. With these four uh, men right here that you mentioned, uh what do you think, what are their specific sounds that you think, you know, make them be who they are? Like, what do you think it is about their sound? Like, let's just start with DJ Premier. What is it about his sound? It's just it's the, the, the grit and the, the preciseness of the way he's, he's chopping the, mm. the samples. I mean, he's, he's making, I mean, completely, there's so many records he's using to make, you know, one song. I mean, chopping out individual phrase, I mean, chopping words from different songs to make a phrase on this was just, just crazy. I mean, it sounded, that's what New York sounded like to me in the, in the mid-90s. I mean, it was DJ Premier. That's what, right. that's what it sounded like. He, he epitomized that, that sound. It sounded like how New York looked yes. in the pictures. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, then you have Dre. And, of course, you know, me living on the West Coast for... 25 years. I definitely am familiar with that sound. What do you think it is about uh, Dre sound that makes him so distinct? Just the, uh, the, the sharpness and the, I mean, the preciseness of the, 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 the mixing, just the, the way it actually sounds, mm-hmm. regardless of what he decides to, to mm-hmm. play. It's mm-hmm. just it's more from an engineer's a gear or a standpoint or whatever. It's just it's pristine. I mean, nothing sounds right. like that. Yeah, and then let's 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 finish that up with Timberland and Pharrell. What about those two? That's just the, the experimentation. I mean, mm-hmm. the sounds that they decided to use. It was just a, nothing, nothing that I'd ever heard. And every time they decided to do a track, they got some sounds on there that I don't even know. I mean, where, where, where are you getting? <laughs> Yes. And so with the word sound, I'm glad that you, you know, you mentioned, I, well, we were talking about sound because, <clears throat> excuse me, with all of these musicians, excuse me, um, gosh, um, producers that you mentioned, 
Do you feel like they are responsible for making a distinct sound that is, you know, West Coast, you know, East Coast, you know, South, North, you know, North? Like, do you think that they have made it to where, okay, this is what the sound is like for the South? This is what it's like all over, you know. Do you feel like they're responsible for that? I think Dre, I mean, to a certain extent. I mean, it, it sounded well. I mean, and, and Primo, too. I mean, they, they, like I said, it, when listening to DJ Premier, it's like, it sounded like how New York looked. Yes, but yeah, yeah. A lot, people, a lot of people followed in the way that he got yeah. samples. So, yeah, I, I definitely think he, he had a huge, I mean, huge <laughs> part in, in that. And, and, and Dre, I mean, that, yeah, that sounds like California. That sounds like L.A. Yes. Uh, to me. Yes. So smooth and, and just so crisp. And, right. Yeah, I've, I've never been to LA, but I'm, I'm sure that's probably how it feels. Like yeah, it's, it's it's different, definitely. Um, so when it comes to excuse me, when it comes to the music industry and sound again, what is so different about the South? Oh, we have our own sound. You know, definitely have our own sound, but what? What do you think is so different and distinct about the music in the South? I think just coming from the, maybe the, I mean, the, the experiences, I mean, just especially how the, the music goes with the, 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 the cadences and a lot of the, mm-hmm. the, the bounce and the, a lot of the differences that the, the music in the South has that comes from, I mean, way back, I mean, from, you know, spirituals maybe that the, that slaves, a lot of stuff. That's wow. the rhythm. Mm. You know, all, all of that is, it, it, it permeates through the, you know, through the music. I think it just, it, it just came from there. That's amazing. It's a, a unique experience that Southerners had, you know, produces yes. a, a you know, unique sound. Yes, you it know, does. It does. I'll never forget the time my parents allowed me, <clears throat> excuse me, I was a teenage girl. And I was, uh, you, know, you know, every summer they like to ship me back to the South. And so, you know, they're shipping me from California to Alabama. And now I'm of the age where I've been gone to a couple parties or two in Cali. So I'm trying to see what's popping in that, you know, Alabama, right? If anything pops in Alabama. So I'm just like, okay, let me go back. You know, I'm there because that's where, you know, my mother's and father's family hails from. And so, you know, I get there and that's when I'm introduced to... Luke. <laughs> okay. Um uh, <laughs> I was introduced to Luke, to Life Crew, and a few others, and I was introduced to a new way of dancing and I it's um <laughs> and I took it back to California. <laughs> okay. And I just have to say that that sound uh you know it was something about that sound. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is making me move. This is getting the party crunk. This is everybody's on the dance floor. You know what I'm saying? Like this is what now it, the AC unit must've been out because it ain't the only thing it's going to be, uh, woo. But uh, anyway, so I I learned how to dance. I think that's where the stanky leg came from because the, the the smell in there. Okay, let me stop. <laughs> oh, you can't do the butt everywhere you go, everybody. Okay. Okay, so anyway, so, you know, I learned some dance moves and I took it back. But I just think it was just the music alone just was just like, okay, these chords or whatever, you know, whoever Luke is and whoever this you know, producer is, they know how to get the people moving. And so how important to you is it to get the people moving or is that not the main objective when it comes to a song? Of course, you know, it depends on the song, but let's just say for a club banger, you know, for lack of better terms, uh, you know, what is, is, is that important to make the people on the dance floor move to you? Yes, yes, indeed. And, you know, people always want to get their songs played. And I think, you know, it's just like the music industry in in a 
perfect world, you know, everybody has a good ear. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, you know, the DJs, you know, all of them, no matter who they are, they know how to, you know, put out a good mix. They know how to get the crowd moving. But then that's really like where the cause and effect comes in because then then that's based on who's making the music, right? Because the DJs can't play if there's nothing to play. So then who's producing the product? So then it's like, okay, there's pressure on the artists and the, you know, music production team to create something that the DJs are going to even want to play, know to play, you know. So what I'm thinking about is heavy rotation with mainstream, you know, media, with radio stations and everything. What songs do you feel like need to come off the radio right now as far as rotation? (laughs) Off. Not on, off. Like, what do you feel like could have been mixed better? Could have been mastered better? Could have even, you know, been, uh, you know, maybe different lyrics for the song? You know, because sometimes lyrics and beats don't all go together. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, what do you feel like needs to come off the radio right now? Yes. Wow. Wow. The care isn't there in, in, in that area. So, I mean, yeah. From that area, whatever, pick, pick a song. <laughs> Any song. Okay, that's what I'm getting to. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 But I feel like when you mumble, see, I mumbled when I was coming out of my sedation from my surgery, right? Okay. (laughs) Say it, Ayana. By the way, brothers and sisters, you are listening live to the tour on the Sister Speak show, and my special guest is producer Ben Wade. Okay, so, you know, I mumbled when I was coming out of my sedation because. You know, they had me on that dilated. And it was serious. Like, and my surgery was, you know, it was pretty long. And, okay, so I'm mumbling. I really don't know what I'm saying. I'm saying something. and But this is because this is what's going on in my head. And there is something in my head that is influencing my words. That's making me not be audible, articulate, or even really make too much sense. So, now, with the, I feel like with the drug culture being the way it is and everybody, not everybody, but a lot of somebodies, you know, loving to be off of that lean and other type of drugs. I feel like this, what they're saying is what actually is happening in their head. This is how they hear things. This is how things compute. This is what's at, you're getting live verbal footage of what's actually transpiring in their mind because yeah. Cause when you're, when you're sober, when you are off of a different diet or a different lifestyle, you're going to speak differently and convey your message differently. You're going to, your, your level of thinking about others is going to be deeper. But if you're in a, a, a heavily sedated lean binge, if you will, oh, you're going to say nothing and you're going to record it and it's going to get produced And the only people who will understand what you're saying are the people who are also in that drug-induced lifestyle. You know, it's just like, you know, speaking, if you have a child and when your baby's first born, you're like, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da, da 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 you know, the shoot, what you think? Yeah, your baby's going to be like, la, 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 You know what I'm saying? Like, because that's what you're saying, right? And they can really, you know, that's the language. So it's like, you know, I feel like that's why mumble rap is so popular. It's just because the sign of the times are a, a heavily drug-induced culture where everything is moving at a very, very, very slow pace where you can barely move about, so you're barely going to record your album. You're not going to have, like, if I eat all these berries 
which I love. If I eat berries and I'm on this whole kick, kick, kick of healthy, healthy, healthy. If I get in the booth with you, Ben, it's just going to be like, hey, everybody, how you doing? I'm so glad everybody is out here today. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Excuse me, because I'm just full of that energy. But whatever I intake in conclusion of that part of, the, uh, of my commentary, whatever I intake is what I'm going to produce. Period. You know? And don't let the producer be on no lean. Oh, no. Goodness. You know? Gosh, you just like, oh, no, what is this about? And it makes you squint. Like, that mumble rap makes you squint. It makes, you know, it really does. And go ahead. I don't know. I don't know. Right, right. But you know what? The thing about it is. And I and I and I and I hear what I'm saying in the most sensitive way, everybody, as I really take the time to form this thought and say it. When music artists have an addiction to a substance, sometimes that substance outweighs their love for music. And a lot of times we wake up to hearing that such and such artist has passed away from an overdose. And so with that culture being so popular and with heroin and codeine and all of that being really a strong product, okay? You know, a lot of people pass away from the lean. And so then... Does their music live on? Or does their music pass away with the artist? And so that is a thought. You know, that's not even something that anybody needs to even answer. That's just a thought. Like, we need to understand that this mumble rap, if it is induced and produced with lean and other drugs that will kill you, then it is... Factual to say that some artists may not make it and therefore their music may not live on. And so, so that is a desperate call to all the artists because I don't want to see anybody overdose from lean. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear that my brothers and sisters, you know, um, that the stronghold took them, took them, took them over. I don't want to hear that. You know, I want my brothers and sisters to be healthy, as healthy as you can be. We're not perfect, but I do want you to be healthy, you know. And so I want all of my independent artists and those who are signed, but really the independent artists, because you're the ones who have that creative control and who can make a difference. Please continue to make great music in spite of what you see before you in mainstream streaming of music. Thank you all for listening to that. Do you want to add anything to that, my brother? You can. I mean, it sounds good. I mean, I had never thought of it. I had never thought of it like that. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you saying that, though. Yeah. You know, and but you know what? I think that, you know, accessibility plays a huge role in our choices. And... You know, that's just it. So I just want to, I just really hope that our, our our brothers and sisters out there who are in a struggle, you know, will be delivered from that struggle and wake up and stop making music that poisons our people. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and so I appreciate you for having um, a moral compass that is dedicated towards your image and your integrity first, you know, and that you do consider uh, the fact that you're here because you love to do it. And it shows, you know, when, when you don't have as much as many monkeys on your back, so to speak, or as many things, you know, we all going through something, but, you can kind of hear where a person is at based on what they're producing. So I just appreciate the sound that you create and provide for our ears because it's much needed 
and it's um, much desired, you know? So I just want to thank you for what you have done so far to contribute to the music industry with your integrity as a producer. Yes. Yes, for sure. So what are some of your next projects that are that we can look out for? Yes. Okay. Clothing line. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Oh, Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate, you know, I'm smiling. I think you can hear it in my voice. That that really humbles me. And I thank you so much. And I'm, I'm on board and, you know, just continue to keep me and keep me, you know, keep in contact with me so we can execute what this is that you have planned. Before. Now, see, now you've got me curious, but I have matured to a point to where I'm going to wait. <laughs> I have matured. I have arrived. I know what this is. Thank you. No, I really appreciate you with that. Um, so how can music artists all over the world get in touch with you so they can have their songs produced by such a super producer as yourself. Okay, and Okay, and so do you mind running some of your music creds? As far as like uh, who you know who who all you who you've been working with, let's just say in the past year. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Okay, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. You thought you was going to skate, didn't you, Ben? Ben, Ben thought he was going to skate, y'all. Not escape, okay? He thought he was going to skate. Nah, uh uh-uh. Nope, not today. Writing this down. Okay, now see, we've been talking this entire time, and the conversation and the vibe has been electric and wonderful. And I'm getting ready to, you know, close the show out. And having you, you know, get ready to give your shout outs. And then you throw this on the plate and think we ain't going to eat it. You did not tell us that you had grilled chicken too. Only thing you said that we had, Ben, was just steak. You didn't tell us about the grilled chicken. Yes, we're staying. Everybody take your coats off. Put your purses in your lap. And let's listen to the last five minutes of how Ben sneak attacks the show and tells us humbly that he has just been providing music for National Geographic. 
the background music for Africans, Africa's Deadliest. Now, everybody watches National Geographic, and we all know about Africa's Deadliest, because if we go to Africa, we need to know what's deadly out there, okay? So, wait a minute, Ben, are you serious right now? That is epic. Do you hear me? That is epic. That is epic. Uh-uh. The, the, the artists, I mean, it's, it's few and far between. I'll leave the producer for myself. Like I said, I need to have a connection there. It's not about the money with me, so oh, you know, I, I don't mind that. But a lot of this, I do a lot of a lot of work in, in that realm there. So, yeah, over the past couple of years. Now, wow. Uh, Africa Deadly is here. National Geographic, they got with me. They heard my music somewhere through. Somewhere that I, I posted and asked could I, you know, gave me a little shot to audition and try out. And it kind of went from there, you know. My mouth is wide open. If there was a dragonfly in the room, he'd have a safe landing. Um, all right, wait a minute. That is, that's a blessing. And I believe, you know, it goes back to thank God for laying you off. Right? Exactly. Because, you know, there are some things that you can't even dream of that are there for you. There are some blessings that are for us that we've never prayed about, that we've never even considered, that are just there. And as a result of them being just there, if you don't give up, if you keep pressing, if you continue to have faith, no matter what it looks like, you wake up, You check your emails and you're suddenly, your joy in the morning is right there and your life changes forever. And I know for you, you did not seek them out. They sought you out. That is the power. That's the power of God Almighty. That is the power of God himself showing you that he is a promise keeper and that he does supply all of your needs. And I want everybody to really hear what he just said. He slid that in, but I'm, but I'm highlighting it because it needs to be kudoed out. It needs to be kudoed forever and ever for everybody to hear. Like those of you who have been laid off, those of you who are getting ready to get laid off and don't even know it, hold on, hold on, don't fret, hold on, something better is coming. That's not cliche. God multiplies by subtraction. You better understand this today. Some of you, you know, need to understand what it is to have a solar powered calculator, Oh my gosh. I'm just going to let that rest. That might've gone over some of y'all head, but understand what a solar power calculator is today on the tour on the sister speak show. Yes. Won't he do it? So, you know, um, I just want to, you know, I just have to just hit the applause sound effect right now, uh, for that right there. You know, that is to be commended and honored and that your music production is accompanying National Geographic's Africans Deadliest. They sought you out. They heard it. You auditioned. You got it. It was yours before the foundation of the earth. Oh, my gosh. That is, you know what? Thank you for that testimony, Ben. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. You know, that makes tears well up in my eyes. I just am so glad when I hear other people being blessed you know, um, uh, hearing, just getting great news, you know, having seasons of several dark periods, but one day, you know, the sun shining forever, you know what I mean? Like, because I just tell everybody all the time, like how else is a picture, old school pictures were developed in the dark, 
And I know one thing about the Lord, when it's not broke, he doesn't have to fix it. And a lot of times the shaking that we experience in the darkness and, and all of that is because we're being developed. You know, sometimes we don't like to crawl, to have to go back into caterpillar form because what will people think and, you know, shame and embarrassment. And, you know, you have your enemies who want to see you not make it. And here you are, you were a butterfly for this season. And now you're back in the cocoon and aha, you're a caterpillar again. And it's just like, but wait, but wait, but wait, this cocoon doesn't last always. This cocoon is nothing but a holding cell for something that is magnificent, that is getting ready to manifest on the outside and I know you see it because a butterfly is beautiful and there has never been one person that has said a butterfly is not pretty but we have to be willing we have to be willing to be a caterpillar more than once more than once more than once and if you can adjust yourself from crawling to flying to confinement because one thing I always say is this and this is real Tight spaces leaves no pla- no no space for bullshit. So if you are in a tight place, that means that there's some stuff in you that has to go so you can have more room to explore and to reach altitudes. I've never seen an eagle carrying his nest on its back. <sighs> in flight... The nest is never on his back. I don't ever see an eagle flying around with the eggshells that he was hatched from. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, y'all. Altitudes. We were created for altitudes. You know what, Ben? Um, Not um. I know what I'm about to say. Ben, thank you. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for blessing the listening the international listening audience with your time, your talent, your treasure, you know, your testimony. Thank you. I really thank, thank you for that alliteration, Lord. I, you know, I just really want to thank you so much for, for that. Thank you for coming on this show, this platform. I appreciate the platform. I thank you for, for having me. Uh, I, You're amazing. I Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that means so much to me. Dallas, you know, we have a lot of amazing people. A lot of amazing people in Texas. A lot of amazing people in this world. But I'm just, everybody respect what I'm saying because this is where I am. You know, um, we have a lot of amazing people in Dallas. And the one thing that you, if I could give a tip to anybody who's into podcasting or interviewing or anything... Don't forget the people in your city. Do not ignore the people in your city. Seek the people out where you live. Their talents need to be magnified. It'll, it, once you do that, you'll be able to, un, it'll be respected that you go outside of the state and interview people. Don't forget the people inside of where you live. You got to put on for your city. Remember that, um, you know, I want to know, is there anybody that you would like to give a shout out to, Ben? Oh, hi, Kenny. Hi to everybody who supports this brother. Please keep supporting him. You know, everybody take the time out to go to his Instagram page. Take the time out to listen to his music, you know, and with Africa's uh, Africans, excuse me, Africa's deadliest on National Geo. Yeah. Yeah. Please. And everybody understand that. Please do that. You know, watch this because number one, you need to know what what's out there in Africa. You need to know what's out there anywhere. But especially if you're going to be traveling, you know, why not watch that? You know, watch where you step and, and learn how to watch where you step by watching Africa's Deadliest. And I get you on that because every time you play it, you know, you're supporting this brother. You're, you're supporting a lot of people who have come together to create, uh, you know, 
Africa's deadliest through National Geographic. You support him. You know, plus, even with the Sister Speak show, I, I have sponsors. When you listen to my show, there's a, there are commercials that play at the beginning of my show. That's, that's a part of how I get what I get, that monetization. So when you play, you're helping us live. Now, don't be a hater. Please be a participator because, you know, you got to eat too. And God, God, God is very, he has a great sense of humor. You know, here you are, a nine to fiver, looking down on the creative artists who are in the struggle of their lives, you know, trying to make it and don't want to give up. And the next thing you know, you don't have a job and now you have to get off into your hobbies and talents. But because you didn't sow seeds of support, it's hard to get people to gravitate and navigate towards what you do. I'm telling you, your attitude, no matter where you are right now, it's going to determine where you go later on. Somebody better understand that today. So support my brother. Please support my brother. Uh, you know, thank you so much, Ben. I look forward to, you know, hearing more sound production. I look forward to hearing you tell me about other emails you've received and, uh, you know, that have changed your life and nothing but up for you. So I pray that you reach several altitudes in this world, you know what I mean? And that you continue to bless people and, you know, you've really encouraged us tonight. Do you have any words of wisdom that you would like to leave for the listening audience as we get ready to bring this conversation to a close? Hey, just, just keep pushing. Just keep, keep pushing. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing what you're doing. Even if it seems like it's not getting you anywhere, it seems, even if it seems like you're spinning your wheels, just keep doing it. Words of wisdom from producer, excuse me, I got to say super producer, super producer, Ben Wade, uh, Google him. You know, it's a beautiful thing when you can say Google me. You know what I mean? I don't even, look, this is how I deal with anybody who is a, a footstool. If I Google them, what would happen? And then I just leave it right there. You don't need to get it into it, anybody. Are they Googleable? Case closed. Case closed. If I Google you and I don't see service, if I don't see grind, if I don't see hustle, if all I see is being verified, it's a problem. I need to see the... <laughs> I need to stop it. No, I don't. I need to keep it up. Anyway, so you know what, Ben? You did have a good time on the Sister Speak show, and you don't mind coming back again, do you? I mean, coming back, do you? Oh, I'm going to get you on the line now. Well, you know what? Thank you so much. You have been a blessing, and I thank God for creating you. I thank God for predesti predestinating this time for us to uh, be able to converse, and I pray nothing but progression, prosperity, and perseverance for you, and you keep on making hits, and this is definitely not goodbye. This is just I'll simply talk to you later, and I will send you a copy in your direct message or your email, whichever one you prefer, of this interview. Which one do you want, direct message or email? Uh, you can send through a direct message. You know that, that's good. I, I got you then. Okay. Well, you know what? You take care, and you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Uh, you too. I appreciate y'all. Okay. Thank you very much for having me, all right? All right. You're welcome anytime. Brothers and sisters, we must give a round of applause for super producer Ben Wade. Brothers and sisters, thank you for listening live to the tour on the Sister Speak show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. A talk show for great minds that create, inspire, impact, and evolve. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through the arts. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through Ayana, recording live from Dallas, Texas. You know, we're going up because anything going down is crashing. I thank you for being a wonderful listening audience. 
you were blessed this evening with a great conversation, a great vibe with producer Ben Wade. Check him out on Instagram. Google him. Yeah, you know I mean, and also you've got to watch National Geographic, Africa's Deadliest. Oh my gosh! Like, won't he do it? I mean, everything is absolutely amazing whenever I vibe out with my special guest. If you are interested in being a special guest on the Sister Speak show, contact me at sgtqueen on Instagram, or you can contact me on my website at sistergoodthing.com. Go to the contact page, submit your inquiry, and I'd love to converse with you if... What you do is conducive to what we do on the Sister Speak show. So far, the people who have reached out to me, it has been a win-win situation. If you have any music that you would like for me to play, all you have to do is send it to me in MP3 format. Clean version, I strongly prefer because we do have an internationally listening audience, international listening audience, and, you know, that's just, you know, appropriate for the show. Also, I'd like to take the time out to say hello to the listeners in Cambodia, Mongolia, Thailand, Tanzania, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Belgium, Australia, Canada, Germany, China, Philippines, Colombia, Brazil, who else do we have? Ghana, I think I might have said Ghana. United Republic of Tanzania. Who else do we have on there? United Arab of, let's see, Emir- Emirates. I like to buy a word. Not even a vowel. I need to buy a word. So I just like to thank you all so much for listening. And hello to everybody within the United States who has been listening to the Sister Speak Show. You are valued. I really appreciate you. And I need you all to do me a favor. Pause. I would appreciate your vote for Podcast of the Year with the Cosign Magazine Awards, which will be held December 1st in downtown Dallas at the Crown Plaza Hotel. That's right. I would like to be nominated. Oh, I've, I've, I've had people nominate me, but if I am a part of the nominations, I'm going to need y'all to vote. September 19th, for the Sister Speak show, everybody who's listening, okay, I'd really would appreciate your vote. I'm here for the village. I've put in a lot of time and work within this year, and I know I have a long ways to go, but I'm very confident within this year that I've been podcasting for this nomination. So if in fact I make the certified nomination list, I need your vote September 19th. Thank you so much. I'll provide more details once I find out what's popping. Won't he do it? Brothers and sisters, you are amazing. And next time on the tour, we're going to talk about arranging. I've got you covered on the Sister Speak show. Wisdom, great special guest, you know, amazing conversation, just a whole... <laughs> Woo-wop of everything that makes a podcast be a podcast. A lot of work goes into it. So right now, bear with me. I just want to let you know who my next special guest is on the Sister Speak show. So, so far we have had, okay, last we had Lamar. First we had Anna Nichelle and Crisco Brown. And we had Lamar Lomack. We just had Ben Wade. And the next to come on down to the Sister Speak show would be Loso, another producer. He'll be on September 22nd, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time live. Tune in, vibe out with us. And then just added, I just added a special guest to the Sister Speak show who will be on the platform. He's an author as well as a tastemaker. Forgive me for not having his name in memory. I'll provide that with you, and you can check out that information on Instagram so you'll know who we have coming. And he'll be that Sunday, and we have Loso that Saturday. And then 
Last but definitely not least, on the 25th, Ajane will be my special guest, beautiful sister, who is an actress on the web series Money and Respect. For those of you all who are following MC Films, check out MC Films. Season 2 of Money and Respect is now on demand. Excuse me. Yeah, on, available on demand on YouTube. Check them out. And with that being said, I'll talk to you later. Take care. You're going to be all right.